Uh, hey, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to participate in this webinar. I'm very excited to be here. My name is Shir Muller, and I'm the product manager of App Analytics. We have been building a very exciting uh, new product here at IronSource, and today I'd like to walk you through it. At the end of this webinar, you'll know how to use the App Analytics product so that you can use it to grow and scale up your business. I'll give you a quick overview on where to access the platform, and then we'll get our hands dirty and dive into each page and look at some use cases. In the end, we'll wrap it up, and I'll answer some of the questions that you'll send in the comments. But let's go ahead and see our platform. Okay, so here you can see the monetization platform. You have here all of your monetization data. You have your user activity, uh, user acquisition activity. And here you have the app analytics, a uh, whole new section. If you click on it, you will see three pages, overview, explore, and cohorts, and which we'll dive into in a few minutes. Let's start with the overview page. So here you can see all of the most important KPIs that we have in our um, app. So with a bird's eye view, you can see your entire app performance. You can detect anomalies and spikes, which can later um, lead you to further investigate. You can see here the DAO and it's broken into new and returning users. You can see your daily uh, engagements per user, your revenue, which is combined from ads and in-app purchase and so many more. And at the top, you can focus on specific apps. So let's take, for example, two different apps that we wanna focus on. <clears throat> We can also create filters and add them here. So we can um, look at a specific user segment, but let's leave it for now. Let's say, for example, we found something interesting in the playtime metric, and I want to further investigate it. So I can just click on the expand button, and I'm redirected to the explore page where you can freely explore your data. You can actually slice and dice it however you would like. Uh, we, add, we have here 22 different metrics, including session lengths, ARPU, level-based, many, many uh, different uh, metrics that you can choose. And of course, you can also change the x-axis depending on what you're trying to achieve. But by default, we use date because it's the most common one. Now, I find one of the most interesting things to look at at this page is the ability to compare two different metrics to see if we have some sort of correlation between two different aspects of our app. So if we click on the compare button, we have here ability to compare every any two different metrics. So I'm trying to answer here one of the most fundamental questions that we have in our industry. So how does the number of impressions per user affects my playtime? Doesn't harm my user experience? So let's go ahead and select it. Now you can see here both of the metrics and you can compare compare them on a daily basis. Now, here you can see that we have some sort of correlation. We have here around five impressions per user and around 300 seconds playtime per user. But if we lower the number of impressions, we, we're seeing a more um, longer playtime. So this can lead me to believe that the number of impressions actually harming my playtime. So let's say that I decided to cap the impressions at two, for example, to see if my playtime goes much higher. And by the way, in reality, I would recommend to test it before we decided for the entire uh, population of my game. And let's try to test it, for example, in my first um, or most, uh, most common um, geos. But here we cap the impressions at two. And we can see that we have around two impressions per user and it's kind of stable but the playtime hasn't gone up that significantly. So basically we could have shown three more ads per person and have almost the same playtime. So we are losing money because maybe the users are indifferent to the number of ads that we're showing. Maybe it doesn't really matter to them. And of course, before we make this conclusion, it's important to see all of the different um, possibilities. Like maybe it, the data difference between paying and non-paying users. 
So it's important to break by according to different dimensions. Um, but I would also recommend to perform some sort of a stress test to see at which number of impressions per user the playtime actually starts to decrease significantly. Uh, so I can kind of know where my Apple limit is. Now, let's say that I've found something very interesting here in this specific view, and I'm interested in collaborating and sharing this with my teammates. So I don't need to take a screenshot or instruct them how to get to this specific view. I can just copy the URL. You can see how all of the information is already embedded there. And then I can just like very easily, wait, paste it right here. And whoever gets this URL, as long as they have level play um, permissions, they will see the exact same picture. Now, I already see that we have some questions. Uh, hopefully we have time by the end of this webinar and I'll try to answer as many as I can. Um, but let's move over to the cohorts page. So um, this is the typical cohorts analysis of retention. Uh, I guess you already know that. You can see here by the um, different color of the metric that the higher the, the value is, the darker the color is. So just by taking a quick glance, you can kind of understand how the data distributes. Um, and also uh, it's very important to have for each app analytics solution to have retention analysis because you want to know how the users return to your game on each day since the day of install. But we understand that it's not just important to know whether a user has returned or not. You wanna know when they return to your game, how they behave because users can come back to your app log in for two seconds, see that nothing has changed and then drop off instantly. So we added 15 different metrics on top of the existing cohort table. So you can analyze the behavior of users once they return to your game. So for example, we have here playtime. You wanna know how much time the users spend in your app on each day since their, the, the day of install. And it's also very important to see for example, if we look at a specific row, we can see how the users of April 1st uh, evolve through time. But also we can look down the column and we can see here, for example, that day five is significantly lighter than the other days. This indicates to me that there might be some sort of a problem in my fifth day of installation. In this specific case, we actually looked at it and we found that most of the users are running out of their initial resources they were getting as a starter pack but they still haven't unlocked most of the most important um, features in the game. So they're unable to reach clan or special events and actually features that will help them earn more resources. So they are basically stuck. For me, this will be a good place to, to um, offer the users a promotion that is very tempting and has lots of resources. Now, also very important to look at is the ARPU. You want to know how much money the users generate on each day since the day of installation. But it's also very important to look at it in a community view. Once we look at the ARPU on a community basis, we are actually getting the LTV of the users according to their day of install. Now, let's say, for example, we have some sort of campaign uh, running on a specific dates. So we can associate those users with specific campaign and, and get the idea of how much money this campaign is generating. By the way, we do know that some uh, apps has a longer LTV uh, curve and takes longer to ROI. So we give you the ability to a cohort analysis of 90 days back. Of course, once you do that, it's more important to look at the trends by the color and other specific uh, numbers of each day. Now I want to take you to an account that has um, our most exciting uh, new feature unlocked, uh, which is called Funnel. At the moment, Funnel is in closed beta, uh, but everyone who's par participated in this webinar uh, can contact their AM and ask them for um, early access. So uh, basically, Funnel is um, a way to analyze the progression of your users. You can define here different user flow and see the survival rate of your users through those milestones. So basically we're trying to understand how users um, progress from A to B, B to C, and so on. 
And we're trying to see what is the conversion rate between each step. So for me, first of all, I think when I try to, to uh, create funnel analysis, I think the most important thing is to uh, determine what is my goal? What am I trying to achieve? So for the first example, what I'm trying to do is understand better my onboarding uh, process. Because we know that most of the apps lose the vast majority of the users on the first day since install. And the reason of that many times is due to uh, some sort of a problem in the onboarding uh, process. It may be too long, uh, there may be mismatched expectations, and so on. And if we will be able to analyze this process and, and optimize the, the elements of it, we will be able to return um, and retain many more users. So on this specific app, we have um, user funnel of uh, starting with the first login. <clears throat> Sorry. Each event can has attributes, uh, which will help you um, analyze the data on a, a more granular level. But by not selecting any attribute, we're just checking any interaction with a specific uh, event. So the next step would be registration. And after the user has registered, we are prompting them with the privacy policy and then they have to accept it. I'm gonna check this one out. And you can see how I'm starting to accumulate the uh, funnels graph. After they, they accepted the privacy policy, they have to select an avatar. And then for the final step, we will uh, define our goal, which is uh, finish the tutorial. So here we have the tutorial and it has attributes of begin and complete. And of course, I'm inter interested in those who completed the tutorial. So I'm just gonna apply. And this is my conversion funnel for the uh, onboarding process. Now, I can see here on the sidebar, we can see how many users has started this funnel, how many users converted, how much time it took them to convert, and what is my overall conversion rate. At the bottom, we can see at the table that we have drop off rate between each two steps. And we can also have the time it took uh, users to complete each step. Now, something very interesting in this specific funnel, uh, sometimes this, the littlest uh, detail can seem um, most insignificant, but if we just make a few tweaks to the select an avatar, for example, let's take a look. We have two different options for the users to select an avatar. They can select either Flame, Flame or Rocky. Let's take a look, for example, first on all the users who selected Flame. We can see that they have a conversion rate of 20%. Now, if we look for, for the opposite uh, option of selecting Rocky, we can see that we have 10% conversion rate. So there is a significant difference between these two avatars. Now, understanding what makes users select one avatar um, or another one is the whole other story for you to understand. But it's good to know that those users who selected Flame may be more engaged later on. So it's important for me to understand that. I want to show you one more example of the use of um, funnel. And now I'm, I'm referring to more level-based game. I think one of the most fundamental things you have to analyze in your game is your uh, level complexity and you have to know what is your level drop. So I'm going to select levels one to four. Now the attributes here could be whether a user has completed a level, uh, started, failed, um, everything. And by not selecting it, I'm just um, checking any interaction with the level. So it could be complete, fail, uh, start, whatever. Now we know that each level has a normal drop of around 20 to 30%. And we can see that that happens here between levels one and level two, um, level two and level three. But between level three and level four, we're seeing a significant drop of almost 70%. So this may indicate that there is some sort of problem somewhere there. I'm still not sure where, but in order to find out, what I would do is I would isolate the problem. Let's take off the table levels one and two. And let's now concentrate in understanding what makes this um, huge drop. So 
we will just take a look at all of the users who started level three. And then I'm thinking off the top of my head, there could be two explanations. Maybe the level three is too difficult and users just can't complete it. So they're never, never eligible to start level four. So what I'm going to check is out of all the users who started level three, how many of them actually completed that? So I'm gonna select only completed. And now we're seeing 40% drop, which is not great, but still it's not the huge drop that we've seen before of 70%. It still doesn't explain it. So let's go ahead and add any interaction with level four, start, complete, whatever. Here we are seeing the huge drop that we found, we found before. So this indicates me there is some sort of a problem between level three and level four. Now this could be a UX problem, could be a technical problem. It is, we leave it for you to understand what happened there in the gap. You can break down the funnel even further by defining more steps within higher granularity in your uh, progression API. Um, but we found what we we're looking for. Now, uh, with that, let me answer some questions. 